Welcome back. So let's say we don't want right now detect changes calls ng on init all the time and that's kind of annoying because we're going to start working with asynchronous calls and we don't always want ng on init to be called right away. So how can we fix that? Well we can be very stubborn like this and we can start actually adding before each to all of our describes like we already began doing earlier. So I'll try and do that. I just want to now actually say that before each for every area is going to call detect changes before we start actually running these tests. So now I've done it in here. I'll just copy the, the before each right here and I'll do it for the other describes as well. So here we have another one that's the list product. That's actually the one we're working with right now. Let's just put it in here as well. I'll just copy the detect changes. That all, that's all I actually need right here. There we go. And uh, let's go to the next method right here. I'll just do this and I'll get try and show you how we can actually fix this issue. There we go, I'll put it in here as well. And I'll just put it in here as well. So now the detect changes is just moved down to each describe and removed from the before each. Let's see if things are still running. It seems that we're still up and running, right? Perfect stuff. And now what we can do is we can make a new describe that's going to be about async calls. So we'll make a new describe right here. And we'll just call it async calls. For now, it's really not that important. Again, the naming is really up to you. Uh, we'll add a comma right here. We'll do a parenthesis, fair error notation, the doom. There we go. Now we have this new describe. And what we want to do in this guy is we want actually the same thing that we had in the list right here. So we want the helper. Now let's just put that in here. Let's just hide that again. Boom. And we'll put that in here. Now the next thing we want is actually, let's just put it semicolon there. The next thing I want from this product is actually the function we built last lesson. I want to move that down here. Let's just get that function from here. Now it's gone and we'll just hide this area again. Uh, whoop, go back to my async calls and here I'll just add this function right here. There we go. Now you'll notice that I'll keep the detect changes right here and hopefully things will still run. We'll just keep them there and everything still runs. Now we have the async calls. But you'll notice now if I remove the detect changes from here, let's just try and do that. Try and go back. Now it should actually fail because now, well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is um, I never called uh, get products now, but we can actually do it manually again. So let's just try and do it manually. So let's say um, component dot ng on init like this. There we go. Let's try and check it out now. It should actually work again because now I'm calling the ng on init. There we go. And if I want to be even more specific, I could actually just do fixture detect changes down here. Now, this is powerful. I'll show you why in the next lesson, why this is important. Let me try and show the entire screen right here. This is important because now we have full control about when we call ng on init. And it's not all the time I want to call it right away. Sometimes I actually want to wait and add some specific data to my requests or to my data set before I call detect changes. Now I googled this a little bit and I didn't see this answer anywhere so I hope you guys can use it. It's I know it's a bit more work to set it up like this and you'll have to kind of do the describe in every area but I feel you have a lot more power when you decide when you're calling ng on init in your code. So that's it for this lesson. Now you guys know exactly when you can call, uh, how you can call ng on init on demand. See you next time. Bye bye.